All right, so we're looking at the, the review questions for topic one. All right, so my thoughts here, we did, we did explain this a little bit on Friday. What's the first thing I would think of here because the bases are not the same? Change of base. Change of base. Which one am I going to change? The two or the eight? Eight. eight. Okay, very good. Good start. So I'm going to get log base 2x. I'm going to change this to log base 2. So that'll be log base 2 and then log base 2. So you make a fraction out of it. And x goes on top and 8 goes on the bottom. And that's still equal to 3. We'll deal with that in a second. This is key here now. This can be a numerical value. What is the numerical value of that? 3, yeah. 2 to the power of what gives 8? So 3. So I'll write down the next line. Of 2x divided by 3, like that. Question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Sorry? Why would it be 3 if it's 1 third? It's dividing by 3 is the same as 1 third of a number. Yeah, yeah you can, yeah, okay, well, we can combine these now because there's. One of these and there's one third of these. I don't know if you saw this. It was very similar to the one we had. I think there's two thirds of these in total. Do you want me, I, I might slow that down a bit. I'm gonna factor out, this is the exact same as the, the, the one we did in the last video. Minus one, minus one third. You see that? So this is one times that and one third of that. That's, I think that was the tr tricky step here. Uh, there is another way you can probably work this, maybe by going uh, uh, one third times and then to the power of one third. But I think this way is easier because this is two thirds then log 2x is equal to 3. I'm going to continue up here. What do I do with this two thirds? Yeah, I can put it as a power of x, yeah. Okay, so log... Uh, 2x to 2 thirds is equal to 3. Uh, at this stage, I can probably write this without logs, can't I? Yeah. 2 base uh, power 3 is equal to x to the power of 2 thirds. Any, anybody have any ideas what to do next? Yeah. Sorry? Just calc or no calc? No calc. Uh, no calc, yeah. So, A, so 2 over 3 squared is A. Okay, so this is 8 anyway. It's equal to x at square root x cubed, isn't it? Oh, no, sorry. The cube root of x squared, my bad. The denominator is 3, so if it was 2 in the denominator. So, uh, what can we do next? Square root both sides, get rid of this square, yeah? So square root of 8 is, without the calculator, square root, well, just write square root of 8, is equal to the cube root of x. So how do we get rid of a cube root? Cube both sides, yeah? So if I cube this side and cube this side, I'll have x. And the square root of 8 cubed, what is the square root of 8 cubed? It might be okay just to leave it like this. Uh, it's it's not. No. You can if you want to use thirds. This would be this would be two root two because root eight is root four times root two, and that's two root two. That's two root two cubed. I think I'd be happy enough to give that as full marks. This is not. This is a textbook question, not an exam question, so it's a little bit harder. Um, if you got this far, that's fine. But let's just multiply. So what's 2 root 2 times itself? Uh, three times. So it's going to be 8. Oh, that's 2. 8 root 8. And 8 root 8 is 8 root 4 times root 2, which is actually going to be... 16 root 2. Did anyone get that? 16 root 2, yeah. That was a very tricky finish to that one. I wasn't expecting that, actually. Uh, it may have been easier. If you got, uh, actually, at, um, at this stage, you could have got 
Uh, you could have got this to the power of 3 over 2, and this to the power of 3 over 2 might have been easier. Uh, I wouldn't imagine it'd be as hard as this in the exam, this finish. This finish was too hard. I thought it was easier. You did it another way and it was so much easier? I made it, made it too hard. Oh, you, you changed this to log. In hindsight, that might have been easier, yeah. Log 2-2. Two, two. And then the three up. Oh, okay. Okay. Is, is it the same? I think that's root of Is that the same answer? No, it's not the same answer. No, the same answer. Oh, maybe you're wrong. I think you're all wrong. <laughs> this is the right answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on. I'll try a little, if we have time at the end, I'll try and redo this one with an easier, with a different method. Okay, so question two, I think was a lot easier. Um, okay. State the sequence that is arithmetic and find the common difference of that. So one of these sequences is adding. Uh, I think it's this one. Is it? B N. Okay, so uh, how do I know that? Well, it's going up by 2.5 each time. This is the only one that's going up by a consistent number. So find the common. Uh, so B N is arithmetic. Uh, something like that. And the difference is 2.5. Happy with that? Sorry? Uh, you can just write B N. It'd be fine, yeah. Um, State which is geometric then? Which do we think was geometric? Uh, it is CN. How would you test? Is it geometric or not? Mm. Yeah, you'd be alright. Uh, yeah, so U2 divided by U1 and then U3 divided by U2 should be the same number. So 3 divided by one here and six divided by three is not the same number. And then this one is definitely not. A quarter divided by a third and a fifth divided by a quarter is not the same number. Whereas here, I'll just show it with this one. CN is the answer. I'll show it with this one. Um, U2 divided by U1 has to equal U3 divided by U2. It's the same ratio. So U2 in this case is one, the second term. And U1 is three in this CN one. Uh, and U3 then is one third divided by uh, U2 is one. So what's one third divided by one? It's just one third. One third equals one third. There you go. So the ratio is one third. All right. So, and then C, for the geometric sequence, that's the one we just looked at, find the exact value of the sixth term. Give your answer as a fraction. Anyone get this answer as a fraction? One out of eighty-one. Yeah, uh, you can find. You can use, go to your formula booklet and use that formula that we have. I'm on the wrong one. Uh, you, yeah, you can keep going. Yeah, one third of. Oh, maybe that's actually easier because we have the fourth term. We won't, we'll avoid the formula then. If I multiply by a third and a third again, uh, that's going to be one over eighty-one. Yeah, nine times three is twenty-seven. Times three again is eighty-one. Or you could go to the formula. The formula we were going to use is the, um, uh, the S, not the SN, the UN formula here. Okay, that's question two, very good. Question three was compound interest. Okay. I think I... Find the value, okay, so... Uh, takes out a loan with P as the principal uh, compounded monthly. Okay, so let's look at our compound interest formula from our formula booklet. The FV is equal to present value times 1 plus R over 100 K, KN. So I presume you looked at that first. That's there in the formula booklet. Okay, so we, uh, she takes out a loan of P. 
So I think that the, the present value is just P. Find alpha. What's alpha? The interest rate? No. Oh, I need to read this question. <laughs> the size of the loan at the end of each year follows a geometric sequence. Find the value of alpha. So if it's a geometric sequence, we want to find out how much it's multiplying by each year. Yeah. So we can just taste, uh, test any amount, can't we? Did anyone get what it's multiplying by each year? Or have an answer? Gabe, what is it? 1.0 Yeah, 1.0263. Yeah, 1 but you that? I have the answer. <laughs> How did I do it so fast? Okay, uh, well, let's use this formula anyway, and then we'll talk about P in a second. So, 1 plus uh, the interest rate is 2.6. Uh, 100 times K, what was K again? K is the number of compounding periods per year. There are 12 of them, I think, if it's compounded monthly. And then um, K is 12 here as well, and N is 12. Well, we can decide what n is in a second. So n and p here are my two unknowns. I, I'm not putting n in here. Oh, I will for a second. All right, so if it follows a geometric sequence, a geometric sequence is the first term is multiplied by a ratio, second term, and so on, yeah? So we need to know what it's multiplied by each term. So whatever the first term is, it's going to be multiplied by all of this. So let's do it for one year, but what would we use as the principal? Yeah, you can put 100. It might actually be easier to just put one. One uh, dollar. Yeah, and then that'll be directly, you can use 100 if you want, 100 dollars. Let's use 100. You, you want to use 100, and let's just see what it, how much that's worth after a year. So then we get our calculator out. We put 100 dollars in to see how much that's worth after a year. Yeah, so uh, yeah. you can type it in, and you get this, you get this number, 102.63. So that's how much extra it's made. So if this was my first year, $100, my second year is 102.63. So what was the multiplier to get between those two years? You can divide these two, and you get 1.0263. Uh, find the value of, uh, yeah, okay, we can argue about three significant figures now. Three significant figures would be alpha, alpha, alpha. Oh, it says five, it says five. Yeah, because otherwise it'd be 1.03, wouldn't it? If it was, okay, so alpha's five significant figures, so there's all five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so you round it to four significant figures, actually. Okay, that's it. Where did I get it? Which formula? This formula? Yeah. Did you find? Did you do a different way? A, a compounded monthly makes it tricky. So, oh, that this three is very important. You do. You would not get. Uh, if you just did 2.6%, that takes away the fact that it compounds monthly. And that compounding monthly has an extra three here. That, that's not the two same 2.6%. The fact that it's compounding monthly. So <laughs> you should have gone for Bitcoin, eh? All right. I was just talking to Mr. Mr. Rendell. All right. A and B. Okay. Did I buy it before April 26th? Oh, before the halving, is it? Uh, I'll see. All right. Uh, all right. Let's go for part B. Uh, the bank lets Fiona's loan increase until it triples in size the original loan. Okay. So this is going to triple. So whatever money they put in at the start, P, uh, one plus, the interest rate is the same, I think, uh, isn't it? 2.6, 2.6, a hundred, 
uh, multiply by 12, compounding 12. We don't know the number of years, so we put n. And I know that principal has to triple, so that's going to be three times p. Does that make sense? The money we put in must be three times. So whatever we put in must be three times. In this equation, the p's cancel. Because p is multiplied here and here. So we're just left with three and we have to solve this. Three is equal to 1.26100 multiplied by 12, 12 to the power of n. Okay, we have to be able to solve this. Okay, this fancy calculator will end solve it. Uh, we, yeah, I can as well, yeah, but it's not as nice as Gabe's. Uh, 2.6 divided by, trying to find my divide button. Okay, I get to this point. Uh, we, we, we do have n solved, and I will show you how to use it. Um, yeah, you got it. Okay, we have to get an answer from this. If we have the exponent as a problem, we need to then use logs usually. So that's log. What's my base? 1.00216. What's my previous answer is 3, and that's equal to 12n. So uh, math, log base, uh, 1.00216667, uh, 3. And we get an answer for that. That's 507.6 is equal to 12 n's and divide that by 12. And I get an answer 42.3. Um, 42.3. You can, of course, draw this on the calculator as well. If you weren't sure, you just draw this one or draw this one and see where it crosses three uh, intersect. Uh, N is 42. Do I have to write anything? Find the year during which, oh, the year during which, so 42 years later. What year did she start? 2021. Plus 2021 during 2063. During 2063. Okay, question four. Uh, this is our one and only proof question. Show that which side I'm going to work with, the left-hand side here or the right-hand side. So we've got an equal sign here. This is the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side. Uh, we need to work with the left-hand side, don't we? Probably. Okay, uh, so I need to cube this out. 2n minus 1 cubed plus 2n plus 1 cubed equals 16n cubed. Plus 12 n. So cubing this out, that's a bit of a pain. But we'll, we can, um, you can use binomials if you want. No one wants to use binomials, obviously. Uh, so let's just do it bit by bit. So let's do um, squared first. That'd be 4 n squared minus 4 n plus 1 times 2 n minus 1. And this would be 4 n squared plus 4 n uh, plus 1 times 2n plus 1. And then we multiply by the 2n and the 1, minus 1. So this is going to, oh, I would prefer to use binomials, but anyway. 8n not squared, 8n cubed minus 12n. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping, I'm going too fast. That's going to that's gonna be a 6n. That's going to be an 8n, sorry. This times this, this times this plus 2n, this times this, minus 4n squared, this times this, plus 4n, this times this, minus 1, plus... This one? Oh, you're right, it is squared. This times this is squared, yeah. Uh, this times this is 8n cubed, this times this is plus 8n squared, this times this, plus 2n, and plus 1, so it's just all these added together. Does this work out eventually? I do hope so. Uh, 
Uh, this and this is, oh, this and this is 16n cubed. I definitely want that. This n squared cancels with this n squared. This cancels with this. I'm looking for 12 n's. There's two, there's four, another four, so that's six. Another two. So, oh, yes, 12 n, great. And the ones cancel as well. Oh, that's great. Hey, there you go. We got it. Yes. <laughs> B, hence or otherwise, prove that the sum of two cubes, so this is the sum of two cubes of any two consecutive odd. Do you see that these would be two odd numbers? 2n minus 1 and then 2n plus 1 would be consecutive odd numbers. Does that make sense? Because 2n would be an even number, minus 1 would be odd, and 2n would be the same even number, plus 1 would be odd one on the other side. So that means consecutive odd ones. Okay, so that's... So all I have to do is show that this then, because we're already cubed it, is divisible by 4. So how do I show... So 16n cubed plus 12, and the only way I can show, well, the easiest way to show that this is divisible by 4 is by factor out of 4. If I can factor out of 4, it means it's divisible by 4. So I get 4n cubed plus 3n, and that, there you go. Because you can factor out of 4, it is divisible by 4. That's it. Very good. That's a multiple of 4. So it's a multiple of 4, you can say, or something like that. Okay. Uh, that was a tricky little multiplication. You could have used binomial theorem, but of course, we have a hatred of that for some reason, which we're going to do right now. Okay. Uh, first one, write down the number of terms in this expansion. It is 10. Thank you, because 9 is 1. All right, because we have a zero term. We're going to write the general term here. We have 2x, I'm going to read 2x minus 1 to the power of 9. The general term for this, we write two brackets. 2x is in the first one, minus 1 is in the second one. Each of those is going to be to the power of something. And then we have our big bracket for n choose or, many different up, uh, ways it can be formed. And we put 9 here. And that is the start of the general term. Okay, we, this one's quite straightforward. We need the x squared term. The only way we can get x squared, this is not multiplied by anything, there's no fractions here. The only way we can get x squared is if this box is a two. And that means there's seven left because two plus seven must add to nine. What goes, number goes here is the last thing, a seven. And that's it. That's our setup. We just need to figure out each one of these. This is from the calculator. I'll show you how to do that just in case you forget. Math. Probability over the probability here. NCR. I haven't pressed 9 yet, so I have to go back out. 9, and then press math and all the way over. Uh, NCR 7. And I should get 36, and I do. So that's 36. This is 2x squared, which is 4x squared. All these are multiplied together. A minus 1 to the power of 7 is minus 1. Don't be caught out by the minus 1 max. Yeah. Why is it 2 here? Well, in the power here? Because the question asks for the coefficient of the x squared term. If this isn't squared, this x is not squared. What? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Why is it Because two and seven. Here, uh, it matches whatever this is. Why is it not two here? It could be two as well. You'll get the same answer. Because uh, Pascal's triangle will go like this, and the same answer lies here and here in the triangle, in the 2 and the 7 position. You'll get 36 twice. Yeah. So press 9 on your calculator. Math. Over to probability. Down to the third one, NCR. Let's press 2 this time. And you will also get 36. Math. 
Press nine first, yeah. Math. Over to probability, P or B. Enter, uh, or not enter. Down to NCR. And, uh, so if I multiply 36 by four by minus one, I get minus 144 X squared, and that's the X squared term. Max? Priya. Stop. X squared. Uh, so the coefficient is this number. We don't need the x squared. Okay, so next one we have an arithmetic. This should be pretty straightforward. We have an arithmetic sequence. Write down the common difference. Part A is just two. Uh, you might actually, yeah. Because it's not a coefficient. X squared is the whole term. Coefficient is. If you do this, it'd be fine, yeah. All right, find U10. So U10, you're going to use this from the formula book that you won, or there's other ways to do it. You could just keep going. Uh, differences, so U10 then is the first term, 3, plus the term number, 10, minus 1, and the difference you just found to be 2. You can use, oh, you cannot use the calculator here, so we have to work it out. 3 plus uh, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 3 plus 18 is 21. You could have just kept going. And part two, then you got to use the sum of terms for 10, S10. Because we know the 10th term and we also know the first term, we can use uh, this second formula, which is if you know the first and the last one. 10 over 2, the first term plus the last term, 3 plus 21. Uh, this is 5 times 24, then, which is 120. Uh, you could just use the normal formula. Part C then, given that UN is 153 or 253, so you're back to this formula here. You just don't know what N is. So you know 253 is some term. Find N. So you still know the first term is 3. You don't know N. And you know the difference is 2. Solve for N. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, so 1 subtracts over. I think 2, 5, 2 is equal to 2 n's. So n's have to be 2, 5, 2 divided by 2, which is 126. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about gold, gold population starts. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so this is about... Our multiplier here is crucial if you want to, uh, first of all, give every answer correct to the whole number, so it's not three significant figures again. Our multiplier here is what? If the population is increasing by 15% each year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it starts the first year. I'm going to say 232 two, multiplied by my multiplier, which is 1.15. That gives me 115% and 10 years. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, you can do the, uh, okay, you can do the formula. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's your ratio? Your ratio is still going to be 1.15, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's, 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 what, did you use the compound interest formula? Oh, okay. Yeah, you can. All right, so this gives 939 or so. And this one is 20 years, so it gives 232 multiplied by 1.15 to the power of 20. What was that? 3797 is what I got. Okay. Part B, then the number of years to take the population. You can, you can just leave. 30, how do we set it up? 
Yeah, okay. It's this, isn't it? Yeah, you can use the compound interest formula as well. It's just this. That's not 2.32. That's a mistake. Uh, so you can solve this loads of ways using the GDC, maybe uh, using logs again, but you should get 30, 30 years. You divide by 2, 32, and then use logs if you want. You can draw this on a calculator or you can use NSolve. Uh, okay. Uh, next one up, we are going to use binomials again. So, uh, general term, Stefan, Lisa, you're going to help me with the general term here. I'm going to open two brackets first. What goes in the first one? Yes, there's no plus between them. These will end up being multiplied. We put a box here and a box here. We'll figure out what those powers need to be in a second. In this one, the NCR, it's six. Okay, we've started. We've got a general term. We need to figure out the constant term. Constant term. So we, we, I explained this the last day. If I have something like this, one of these is the constant term. Which one is it? Seven. Seven. Why? because it's got no x's with it it's just a number it's constantly seven nothing changes with it it is seven so we need to find where it's x to the power of zero because that'll give a constant that's that's just one that's give a constant term in this expansion does that make sense no. okay uh, It's the only thing, it's the only thing that won't have an X with it. When I multiply this out, all terms are going to... Okay. No, we can make it though. What do you have? Two. Two? We get X squared? Put two here. Yeah. That won't be a term. That's the. If you do x squared divided by x squared, that is x to the power of zero. Yes, and that would be one, but that is not in this sequence because it's this to the power of six. It just won't happen in this one. We need to make it so six is added up in these two boxes. It has to add to six. For which way around? No, it's going to be two and four. Yes. So this is going to make x4, and this one's x4. Correct. Skylar, did we follow that? Did you get this, Skylar? Yes, sir. Good man. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay, four matches here. Okay, six choose four is 15. Uh, you can do that in your calculator. Hmm? All right, uh, because when I multiply this out, I'm going to get, this is going to be x to the power of 4 on top from this one, and there's going to be an x to the 4 on the bottom from this one. That 4 is going to be applied down here, and when they are combined, they make x0, which is just 1, and that's going to make a term without an x in it, a constant term. Hmm? Okay. So these X4s we knew would cancel, and they do cancel, which is great. So we get 15A to the power of 4 over 4 is equal to 960. We can solve this. 15A to the power of 4 is equal to 960 times 4. Divide by 15. I think A is then equal, well, let's do it. Divide by 15. 2, 5, 6. A to the 4 is equal to 2, 5, 6. So what's A equal to? And we get an answer. The fourth root of 2, 5, 6, yeah. Which if you get, put in your calculator, is actually 4. 
Plus or minus, yeah. Plus or minus four. Uh, and then, yeah, you could graph that. Here's the hint, possible values of A. So if you just wrote four, that's only a value. So values, that definitely told me there's gonna be two answers. Okay, two left. Okay. For what values of x will this series converge? Okay. Okay. For convergence, we need to know the ratio, as in what are you multiplying by each time? Okay, let's find the ratio. Uh, so what does this mean? This means that we start at one, subbing in one, and then we finish at, in, well, infinity, so let's keep them going on. Okay, so the first term you could say is uh, this. The second term is this. Do we see that? Because yeah. uh, I'm subbing in two. And then the next term would be x minus two. Two? Make sense? So these are the terms. We're not adding them just yet, but these are the terms individually. What's the ratio? It'd be this one. Well, these two divided by each other, this one divided by this. 12x minus 2 to the power of 1 divided by 12x minus 2 to the power of 0. Well, the 12s will cancel. And this is just 1, so the ratio is x minus 2. Yeah? So, what makes a series converge? And we had a little look at that react the last day. What makes a series converge? As in, when you add it together, it ends up going towards a number. What do we need? And it's written here, it's written a little bit. This thing suggests the rate. Less than negative, more than negative one, less than one. Yeah. So it's got to be, ratio has got to be between negative one and one. It's got to be a fraction for it to converge. This is our ratio. We're going to put it in this thing we just wrote. That ratio needs to be between those. So that'll give us a value for x that works. So you could try and solve these both at once. It's very possible. You could solve them separately either. What's the lower value? So we'll just do them separately. What's the lower value here? Add two to both sides. I get one. That's the lower value. And then I'll do the upper value separately. Uh, add two to both sides, three. So x is between 1 and 3. Therefore, my answer, x lies between 1 and 3. You can really keep it like this. That, those values give this. So that, they are the values which the series converges. That was, I don't know. Did anyone get that without help? Yeah, sweet. OK. So, it says then to evaluate the series when x is root 5. Okay. Is root 5 between 1 and 3? Yes. Yes. Root 5 is between 1 and 3 because it's about 2 point something, isn't it? All right. So, let's look at the series again. I now know what x is. The series is infinity, k is equal to 1. 12 root 5 minus 2. I put it root 5 in instead of x, and we have k minus 1. Okay. So I need to fill in my, uh, my in, uh, sum of an infinite geometric. This is this formula. I need to just fill this in. I want to know the first term. So i just taken it from this. u1 all over 1 minus r. Okay.
Uh, okay. So what is the first term of this sequence? We have it written up here. What is this? Well, whatever it is, this bit of it is going to be one, even if I put in root five. Because it's 12. This is the first term in the sequence. 12 root five minus two to the power of zero. Uh, root, I'm oh, sorry, root five. Anything to the power of zero is one. So that's 12 times one, which is 12. So that's the first term. That's pretty useful. 12 is the first term of sequence. One minus, what's the ratio? Uh, well, we have, we have it here. We figured out the ratio was x minus two earlier on. So it's going to be root five minus two, isn't it? So we got to just calculate this. Uh, you could use a calculator for this. Well, we can, we, I'll leave it without a calculator, but the only thing we can do without a calculator is tidy up this. It's, it's uh, one minus root five minus minus two, which is going to be plus two. So that's going to give three minus, and that's the way I'd leave it. That's the answer. Okay, that was, that was technically probably the hardest, technically the hardest question to read it. Maybe not the hardest to do. Okay, and then we're on the last question, which is this one. Uh, I'll rewrite it just to start. Six, three to the power of x plus eight. My initial thinking is I want three to the power of x because uh, nine's bar, I'm gonna convert this to three to the power of x. It feels like a good starting point. So nine is three squared. Uh, okay, and this is perhaps interchangeable. I don't even have an idea how to finish. I think I gave a hint when I went through. I just want those around and then turn them into a quadratic back. Uh, quadratic. I was thinking, but I was not able to find the one that really Okay, so. yeah. So, yes, uh, 3x, now this would be non calculator. Uh, so it's, uh, I've just written it like that to show that that's squared, that's on its own, and this is quadratic. I don't like the way this looks because it's going to be really hard to solve the quadratic. So I'm going to do this thing where I say, I'll just replace this for now and I'll put it back in later. Three to the power of X is A. So I have A squared minus six times A plus eight. And that looks a lot nicer to solve. So I'll go A, A, zero, four, and two, give eight minus and minus, make the minus six. So A can be two or a can be four, there's two possible roots. But of course, A is not A, A is three to the power of X is two, or three to the power of X is four. So I have to solve this. Um, this would be non-calculator, so I think I have to leave it as a log. What's my base for this log to rewrite it? Two. The base? No. The base is three, the answer is two, and x. Yeah, and the base is three, the answer is four, and x is the exponent. They're my two answers. I would leave it like that. Uh, I can't, you can't do anymore.